welcome to another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast. My name is Molly McGrath, and I am the founder of this revolutionary office altering podcast. If you're a first time listener, welcome. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. All right, we are so I'm I'm really ready to hit this one. This is a fresh conversation. Today we're talking about explanations for your employees' job dissatisfaction and disengagement. I don't know if you have been out there in the hiring space uh, post COVID ish, uh, sitting here now in uh, 2021 and trying to grow your law firm and or replace employees, if you've had some of your people that have gotten poached or left um, your firm, uh, it is insanity out there. We have never seen anything like this in the recruiting space as a whole. We're in so many different Facebook groups uh, in regards to recruiters who make placements, things of that nature, and across the board in every industry, people are saying how incredibly tight it is right now, how it is an employee's market. I know you've been listening to me for a while. I've been saying this for years, but right now it is absolutely bonkers. And so what does that mean for you as a law firm owner and why should you care? Maybe you're not in a space where you're trying to hire. Maybe you have not experienced any turnover or employees that have left. But I'm here to tell you that if you are a fortunate one that uh, not experiencing kind of this hiring training onboarding employee replacement game that's going on right now you're not off the hook because you really need to work harder now more than ever on keeping your employees engaged and satisfied job dissatisfaction refers to unhappy or maybe negative feelings about the work or the work environment from the employee's perspective. And there's many, many different factors which might result in job dissatisfaction. But some of them are poor working conditions, overwork, low levels of pay, no scope of promotion or career advancement, maybe lack of recognition, lack of clarity, not um, connected to the heartbeat of the business. These are some of the things we hear when I ask people, tell me a little bit about why you're looking for uh, a job. Why are you looking for some a new opportunity? That's what we're hearing. Um, and usually pay is at the bottom of that from a place of their reason for leaving. But when it comes time for them making a shift and making a move, now more than ever, employees are demanding um, more money. We've seen it across the board. So if you're you're not in this place, you still have to work just as hard to keep your employees satisfied, to keep them happy, to keep them away from the shark infested waters of recruiting land because they're vicious. Right now, I think we have like 17 positions that we're placing anywhere from client service coordinator to paralegals, by and large, tremendous amount of attorney positions. I haven't seen this many attorney positions, which is fantastic. Your firms are growing, but they're very, very tight positions right now. So many employees feel dissatisfied at their job at one point or another, and it's just a matter for a recruiter to hit them at the right time so so you don't lose your people. You need to make certain that you are spending a tremendous amount of time checking in and over-communicating with your employees. And especially if you have any kind of toxic employees on your team that have a way of spreading to other employees and infecting your entire business, which ultimately hits the company and the firm's bottom bottom line. So managers, leaders, entrepreneurs, whatever position you're sitting in need to take 
the time to understand where your people are at. Make certain that you are implementing employee growth plans on a quarterly basis. If you don't have a process or a system, reach out to me. I'll be happy, happy, happy to share my process with you or hop on a Zoom with you to kind of go over that. But the number one reason that people leave whether they're aware of it or not, is because they're feeling, being, or feeling like they're under underpaid. That's one of the primary reasons for job dissatisfaction, especially when recruiters are inboxing them and offering them more money and they find out that just how much they could be paid. So when you, if you have stagnant wages within your firm, you don't, you're not having reviews, there are no incentive-based compensation plans, you're not doing bonuses for your employees, you know, they have still have the stress of paying bills. And if their income's not going up or they don't have an opportunity for generating additional revenue, so often I'll hear from, I'm not going to pay a baby lawyer that much money when they're coming out of college when they don't come with quote unquote years of experience i'll say well there's another firm will first of all because the market's so tight but number two they're walking out with these massive loans and they have to start paying for them so they can't see beyond their next paycheck and research you know you can research salary.com what have you but my recommendation is you go to LinkedIn, you go to Indeed, you go to ZipRecruiter and look at your competition and what they're paying. So if you're searching for a PI attorney or whatever industry you're in and look at what other companies are paying for the same jobs because then that will tell you in regards to what the offers are that are being made out there for as you grow, number one, but also number two, to keep your employees. So make sure you are consistently up-leveling them and they are being and feeling that they are paid not only competitively, but over competition because we all know what it costs to go out there and rehire someone. Number two, limited career growth or advancement. When people have a lack of career growth and advancement, is another reason why your employees feel dissatisfied with their jobs and why they will leave. That's the number one reason, even above pay, that we hear from people. There's no room for opportunity. And when I ask them what that means and have them break it down there of what opportunity means for them, it is about not necessarily moving from a junior position to a senior. It's not about the title. It is just about the clarity and the involvement of what's available for them from a pet place, place of growth and advancement. So employees who feel stuck in their job positions are less motivated to maintain this high productivity than those who do not. And employees feel valued when employers include them in the long-term plans and how they appreciate this through promotions. So in the pandemic, especially when it first hit, I'd say probably toward Q3, Q4, 2020, we had a tremendous amount of employees that were out there looking for jobs. Now it's come to a screeching halt. And they said that because they, 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 the entrepreneurs, the owners, the law firm owners were not sharing their path and plan with them. So they were getting nervous that there was there was no career growth, there was no advancement and getting very nervous. So often people would say, well, the writing's on the wall. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not cut back on marketing. We're not doing our quarterly strategic retreats like we used to, things of that nature. And sometimes it would be for law firms that I knew and that I had worked with, and I knew that wasn't the truth. I knew they were on a path of growth. And the employees would call me and say, you know, I'm getting a little nervous here. But it was because the entrepreneur, the primary attorney, was not carving out the time and creating the time for sharing the growth, the plan, the vision, and the enhancement. So when your employees are on their own personal growth plan, that includes them up-leveling in their career, in their role, 
which also includes up-leveling and opportunity for either bonuses and or base salary. And then also they have, they know True North, they are very, very connected to the long-term growth of the firm and where they're at in that. So you're having your quarterly strategic retreats coupled with the individual growth plans. People will not leave you because if they're not engaged in that, their own personal growth plan, in addition to the firm's growth plan, then they're going to lose interest. And dissatisfied employees lack interest. And a lack of interest in a law firm is another reason why employees are happy. Most employees want to perform job duties that are engaging, they're challenge, challenging, they're impact making, they're difference making. And I saw a recent statistic, only 30% of workers in the U.S. report feeling engaged and motivated at work. While 18% are there in body but feel absolutely disengaged with their work. It could be that their work is, you know, boring, it causes um, repetitive, there's very little incentive, it's confusion and chaos constantly, it's last minute Larry, where they feel like they're the only one who is interested in the production and the profitability, or they may feel unfulfilled in their jobs. Today's workers say if they had to choose, they'd rather have a fulfilling job than a higher paying one. I cannot say enough how much we hear that all day long. That's what we do for a living. We are on the phone every day, all day, myself, my recruiters, talking to people saying, and our number one question, honestly, in our inbox strategy is, hey, are you happy and are you treated well? And that's the subject line that we send out. It makes me so happy when attorneys and paralegals reply. They won't even entertain getting on the phone with them. They're like, thank you for the opportunity, but I'm not even interested in hearing about this because I am very happy where I'm at. And sometimes I'll even go as far as find the managing partner, or find somebody on their website for the firm they're with and send them a note and say, job well done, keep it up and even up-level it because your people won't even talk to me. They won't even talk to a recruiter. Which goes into the next reason that people really feel disengaged within the workplace and, and why there's this dissatisfaction and disengagement. And I know it sounds simplistic, but having poor management. Entrepreneurs, attorneys constantly tell us uh, that they're horrible. They didn't teach us how to run a business in law school. Or I can't, business would be great, but for the employees. I hate managing people. I can't stand to have that. And I'm, it's not my unique ability. It's not my greatest strength. But that doesn't let you off the hook for keep saying that you have to engage somebody in your firm or outsource and hire a fractional CEO. That's my favorite thing that I get to do for law firms across the country. Because if you, there is poor management and poor leadership skills tend to offer little feedback to employees' performance, right? Or they will micromanage because they don't have the skill set or dictate orders to employees instead of motivating them and enrolling them and empowering them and engaging them. And so that causes a decrease in employee productivity. And if you do not have a phenomenal manager or leader, they don't even know what KPIs to look at to discern where the breakdown is within regards to the productivity and how to create a turnaround. So you have to ask yourself if you possibly have that micromanaging style. It just means that you you might need to engage somebody, outsource your, your management and your leadership, or find, have a sleeping giant if you're running your Colby's or strength type finders, your real talent, hiring those assessments, things of that nature, and finding someone within your firm to do it. But at the end of the day, you are hiring human beings, not human doings. And if you give them time, attention, and feedback on a consistent, 
weekly basis, you will see your productivity skyrocket and go through the roof. You will see the engagement go through the roof, the empowerment, the stepping up and, and leading and taking ownership. But you cannot just blanket statement, I never learned how to manage in law school or I'm not a good manager. That's no longer acceptable, especially in this very, very tight employee market. People want time, attention, and feedback. And guess what? When they don't feel heard and there's a lack of communication in the firm, communication is key to employee satisfaction. But employees say management doesn't listen to them or there is no structure or standardization for communication. And many times we hear from employees, they have, you know, an opportunity to speak their mind and those that say they do, but the company never takes the employees' ideas seriously anyway. They don't implement them. So there's kind of this, this false reality where we have this opportunity to speak your mind, but then nothing ever gets done with it, at least is their perspective. They Employees often want to know you appreciate their involvement. You appreciate their voice and you appreciate their insight. They're the ones that are in the trenches, and they truly most often have the best ideas for continual improvement, for efficiency, for effectiveness, for the Kaizen way. And employees don't always need a raise to feel fulfilled. I would lobby hard that they need communication, again, time and attention and feedback, way before money, because if they get that, no money in the world would they leave if the place that they're going to does not offer that environment. So knowing that management values their input and shows it by implementing their ideas can be just as fulfilling, if not more, than a higher salary. So Regardless of what seat you're sitting in, if you are in this crazy, crazy, crazy land of hiring right now, or maybe you're not, maybe you're sitting really pretty with an amazing team, do not get sloppy and let yourself off the hook. You have to make certain that your, your employees are being and feeling like they are paid very, very well. They need to feel like they have career growth and advancement. So again, making them feel and being paid well is implementing the employee growth plan. Having career growth and advancement will be indicated within there as well. Having quarterly strategic retreats where you shut down the entire firm and people know exactly where, what is going on within True North? Where is True North? Where, did, where are we in alignment with the mission, vision, and values of the firm? So you can keep your employees engaged and interested. But it's one thing to talk about it. You also have to make sure you keep it off the shelf. And that happens when you have a rock star management or leadership team And there is a safe place for your employees to not only be heard, but that we're consistently keeping their ideas off the shelf. So when you add that to your weekly stakeholders meeting that you do with the entire firm and you revisit these goals that we've we've prepared in our quarterly strategic retreat, where we check in with people on where they are with their top three for the week, where they're jammed up, where they need help, and we constantly revisit that so they feel like they are heard. Your employees will not leave, but you cannot miss any of these boxes when it comes time to their pay, to their individual growth plans, to the law firm uh, strategic growth plans in your top power projects, and then communication making certain that we have consistent communication where people are getting leadership's time, attention, and feedback. So if you need help with any of these, reach out. 
You can uh, go on our website, hiringandempowering.com, go to the contact page. You can book a call on my calendar. You can shoot me an email at molly at hiringandempowering.com. But there's no reason for you to suffer in silence with this. And if you are feeling that you are losing some of your people, whether they're disengaged or they're physically quitting, then this is something that you have to take full responsibility for right now. And yes, you can turn it around. Yes, you can correct it. So let us know how you do. Until next time. <laughs>